Hello, welcome to Bite Size Med. This video is on the cardiac conduction pathway. The heart contracts and relaxes. The contraction is how it actively moves blood. Atrial contraction pushes blood into the ventricles and ventricular contraction pumps blood into the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. The contraction is because those cells depolarize. These are contractile cells. The heart is special. It doesn't need to be told to contract because it's got specialized muscle cells called conducting cells. These cells are capable of self-excitation, meaning they can generate impulses by themselves. They form the cardiac conduction pathway, and that includes four important structures. There's the sinoatrial node, the atrioventricular node, the atrioventricular bundle, also known as the bundle of His, and the subendocardial plexus of conduction cells, also called the Purkinje fibers. These structures run through the heart between the atria and the ventricles. So capable of self-excitation, the structure which would discharge the fastest would be the one to set the rhythm. The rest gets suppressed. Usually, the structure that takes on that responsibility is the sinoatrial node, hence it acquires the title of pacemaker of the heart. Once impulses get generated, they pass through the rest of the pathway unidirectionally. The first structure is the sinoatrial node. Now it's located in the right atrium, so this is where we're starting. It's located at the upper end of the crista terminalis. If we assume this is the right atrium, and we've opened it up like a book, this would be the smooth posterior wall, and this would be the rough anterior wall. The junction between these two parts of the right atrium is the crista terminalis, and at the upper end of that we've got the sinoatrial node. It's where the superior vena cava enters the right atrium. Impulses get generated here and spread out. It's connected to the atrial contractile cells. They start depolarizing. These contractile cells are connected to each other through gap junctions. This allows ions to spread between the cells so that they can depolarize and contract together. A wave of depolarization spreads through the atria starting from the right atrium. There's also a special interatrial band, called the Bachmann's bundle, that directly connects the right and left atria for faster spread of impulses. There are also internodal bands, which connect this sinoatrial node with the next structure, that's the atrioventricular node. There are three important internodal bands, anterior, middle, and posterior. Now the impulse is at the atrioventricular node. Atrioventricular, so it's located in the atrioventricular septum, near the attachment of the tricuspid valve. Now impulses don't pass through here quickly. The conduction through the AV node is slow. What was the point of atrial depolarization? It makes the atria contract, that's atrial systole. The reason atrial systole happens is to push blood into the ventricles in order to complete ventricular filling. There's a delay in the atrioventricular node that helps that filling complete before the impulse reaches the ventricles and they have to contract. This is called the AV nodal delay, and it's around 0.1 seconds or around 100 milliseconds. I found a few reasons for why the conduction through the AV node is slow. One is that there could be fewer gap junctions and a poor conduction of impulses between the cells of the atrioventricular node. But the point is that there is a delay and then the impulse gets transmitted through the atrioventricular bundle. By now, you've probably wondered why the impulse doesn't just get conducted to the ventricular cells from the atrial cells. That's because between the atria and the ventricles, there is a fibrous septum. This is part of the cardiac skeleton. Now, this septum acts like an electrical insulator. It doesn't allow impulses to be conducted between the atria and the ventricles except through the atrioventricular node and the atrioventricular bundle. This bundle is just an extension of the atrioventricular node, and it enters the interventricular septum. This interventricular septum has two parts, a membranous part above and a muscular part below. At the lower border of the membranous septum, the bundle divides into right and left branches. 
These travel towards the apex of the heart. We've got the right bundle branch and the left bundle branch, which travel along the sides of the septum. The left ventricle is larger and more muscular than the right, so the left bundle branch is larger than the right. And when the septum depolarizes, it does so from left to right. From the apex, they turn upwards towards the base of the heart. There are branches. Now these branches are called the Purkinje fibers. So depolarization would spread from the apex towards the base of the heart. It spreads from the endocardium, which is the innermost layer, towards the epicardium, that's the outermost layer. Depolarization is followed by contraction of the ventricles. So ventricular contraction also happens from the apex towards the base, squeezing blood out. So that makes sense because the contraction pumps blood into the pulmonary trunk and into the aorta. The right side of the heart actually has something that the left doesn't, a septomarginal band, also called a moderator band. This band connects the interventricular septum with the base of the anterior papillary muscle. So this is special to the right side. On the left side of the heart, the left bundle branch actually divides into a left anterior fascicle and the left posterior fascicle. But in the end, both the ventricles depolarize and they contract. The impulse started at the sinoatrial knob. It spread through the atrial contractile cells. It got conducted to the atrioventricular knob. From there, it entered the atrioventricular bundle, down the right and left bundle branches, through the Purkinje fibers to reach the ventricles. The heart can do this on its own, but it is supplied by autonomic nerves. These nerves can modulate what happens, like changing the rate of discharge from the sinoatrial knot, changing the conduction velocity through the atrioventricular knot. If the rate of discharge from the sinoatrial node were to increase, that means there's going to be more action potentials per unit time, a faster heart rate. If it decreases, that means there's going to be lesser action potentials and a lower heart rate. This effect on heart rate is called the chronotropic effect. The autonomic nerves have different ways in which they can change the heart rate, and this is one of them. The conduction through the AV node is basically conduction between the atria and the ventricles. So if that conduction velocity were to increase, there would be faster conduction from the atria to the ventricles. If it decreases, there's a slower conduction. The change in conduction velocity is called a dromotropic effect. Sympathetic stimulation increases both of these. It has a positive chronotropic and a positive dromotropic effect, while parasympathetic stimulation does the opposite. It has a negative chronotropic effect and a negative dromotropic effect. These impulses that travel through the heart, they can be picked up from the body surface by electrocardiography, creating waves. There are five important waves, P, Q, R, S, and T. The atria depolarized and the ventricles depolarized after them. But after depolarization, these cells repolarize. That means there is an atrial repolarization and a ventricular repolarization. The atrial depolarization is the P wave. The ventricular depolarization is the QRS complex, all three waves together. The atrial repolarization doesn't have a visible wave because it gets buried in the QRS complex since it happens at the same time as ventricular depolarization. The ventricular repolarization is the T wave, P, QRS, and T. And that's cardiac conduction. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, you can give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.